This lecture also is extension of linguistic relativity and it is about Sapir-Kuf hypothesis. Let's discuss it in detail. Language is not only to determine the pattern of culture but also determine the manner and the way human mind works. A nation whose language is different from other nations will have a cultural style and way of thinking that is different. If a language is different, if a language is more diverse, so the culture of that nation is more diverse. According to this theory, language we speak influence the way we think. Language simply reflects our thoughts. For example, racist terms exist because people have racist attitudes. The nations who are more racist, they have more racist terminologies, racist words to, dif to give to uh, different uh, categories which they consider lesser. The Sapir-Wolf hypothesis vary. It very transparently presents a view of reality being expressed in language and thus forming in thought. But the question is still debatable. Thought then language or language then thought. What comes first? The question is... What comes first? The thought, what we think that is ref reflected by language or the language itself reflects what we can think. What comes before? Ye kaisa hi question hai ke jase ek muhavra hai, ek paheli hai ke anda pehle aya ya murgi. Isko aap usse exactly relate kar sakte hai. Ke kya insaan agar kehta hai ke jis tarah se wo sochta hai, wo uski language me reflect karta hai. या फिर जो हम सोचते हैं वो हमारी लैंग्वेज में रिफ्लेक्ट करता है ये दो चीज़ें हैं इन दोनों में से एक चीज़ का प्रूफ होना बहुत ज़रूरी है वन लैंग्वेज कैन नॉट बी ट्रांसलेटेड टू अदर लैंग्वेजेस इसका एक प्रूफ ये भी है कि बहुत से ऐसे वर्ड्स एक लैंग्वेज में होते हैं दे आर सर्टन वर्ड्स विच डोंट हैव एनी एग्जिस्टेंट एग्जिस्टेंस इन आर एनी अदर कल्चर फॉर एग्जाम्पल द पंजाबी वर्ड जूट जूट which means jutha this word in its most literal translation to english means the unclean not pure with germs as which is half eaten food no matter how many definitions one tries to construct jut cannot be translated in its full meaning in english but in punjabi we know what is jut it is not jut it is jut jaise hum bolte hain ki ye jutha hai isko mat khao this brings to mind the notion that language is relative thus the same word can have different meanings for different people and these subjective meanings let rise varying cognitions what is relativity in order to speak any language you have to pay attention to the meanings that are grammatically marked in that language for example in english it is necessary to mark the verb to indicate the time of occurrence to show the time of occurrence what you do in english you change the form of verb or you change uh, the helping verb with the with the other form of verb you always use has have with the third form to make past uh, or or present perfect tense or past perfect tense and to form uh, present continuous tense you use ing and is r m like it's raining it's rained and so on so in english you give a special importance to tense in turkish it is important to simply say it rained last night this language has the has more than one past tense depending on one source of knowledge of the event there are two past tenses one to report direct experience and the other to report events that you know about only by inference or hearsay there are two type of past tenses in turkish language one tense is in which you directly say it happened and the other tense will have different form in which the information is not directly coming to you in which you actually taking out information indirectly if you were out in the rain last night you will say it rained last night using the past tense form that indicates that you were a witness to the rain but if you wake up in the morning and see the wet street and garden you are obliged to use the other past tense form the one that indicates that you were not witness to rain itself 
so every language is unique if you regularly speak a language in which you must pick a form of second person address you that marks your social relationship to your interlocutor so second person is you it can be singular or plural such as in spanish to in english it's called you for friends and family and for those socially subordinate the people who are closer to you in spanish language you will uh, call them you but usted you that is a word in, in spanish usted you that you use for the people who are socially above or elder ones who are not equal to you okay or in french two versus whose you must categorize every person you talk to in terms of the relevant relevant position implementation of linguistic relativity in teaching language some language teaching theories have recognized that learning a language means not just learning the language but also the way of life that goes with it yes we believe in that being english teachers that when you are learning any language you are not only learning language but you are learning a way of life the implementation of linguistics rel- relativity in language class is mostly needed in translation class especially especially if you are teaching translation in that scenario the to understand that culture to understand that society to have knowledge of those people how they think how they believe about how they believe what they believe all of these all of these things are very very important learning and translating a foreign language into a mother tongue or other way would prove to be problematic or virtually impossible as students would need to completely alter their thought process when you are learning a foreign language it is very very difficult to learn it as a mother tongue because your culture is different your background is different as pinker states that ability to learn languages of other cultures is associated with the understanding of words and grammatical problems and not to different ways of thinking how uh, languages have different word order you can see different sentences from different languages in uh, japanese batashi wa kun mate english i park to walk so correct sentence is i walk to the park agar aap if you uh, follow the japanese sentence structure the word order so you will have a english sentence like this up i park to walk which is wrong in english we use uh, what is the sentence order first of all we use subject then verb then object right subject then verb then object the concept of sentence in english must be effectively taught by language teachers along with the various examples and exceptions of the rule in order to be able to fairly test and assess students knowledge so what we can conclude we cannot think without language and yes language affects perception and language does affect the patterns of thinking thank you